welcome back to a, another video and welcome if you're new here my name is Dee I live and run a well-being studio here in Canberra Australia and I guess I just love sharing just snippets of my life and behind the scenes of my business and especially I love sharing my passion of aromatherapy and just living a calmer, quieter, more peaceful life, I guess a more simple life. So if that is something that you are interested in, I would love you to subscribe. Just hit the little subscribe button and join us here. That would be just absolutely lovely. Welcome to my first sip and chat video. I have a just a glass of mineral water today because it's actually quite warm and I've been running around doing a whole heap of things so I just feel like I need a nice cool drink today but these sip and chats are going to be monthly videos I think we'll just see how they go um, where I just sit down and catch up with you tell you what's been happening in my life and in my business and yeah maybe just share a few things with you like I've got a few books to share with you today just talk a little bit about my health and well-being and what's going on at the well-being studio as well um, so hopefully they are things that you are interested in but if you would like me to talk about anything in particular in these little sip and chat videos I would be more than happy to so just let me know in the comments on the other thing that I might um, introduce into these sip and chats or that I'd really like to introduce to these um, sip and chats is um, having some guests on with me as well so maybe every second month or something like that I might just bring in probably another Canberra person I'd kind of like to do them in person but we might do some of them over zoom we'll just see um, just where we kind of sit and chat about life and um, yeah any topics that we think might interest you so that is exciting so stay tuned for that <laughs> and before we get started hit pause go and grab yourself a drink I'm going to try and keep these fairly short like no longer than maybe 20 minutes or so maybe even less um, so yeah grab yourself a drink and um, come and join me today I am going to be just talking a little bit I guess about what's been happening for me and um, what I'm doing for my health and well-being what's happening at the well-being studio what I'm reading and then anything else that kind of pops into my mind as I'm chatting away so let's talk about health and well-being, shall we? It's um I was having this conversation with a couple of friends the other day. It's sometimes really hard to know what to share and how much to share. So if you have any questions about like how I deal with things or um, you know what I'm doing for my health and well-being, please feel free to ask because I kind of like to think I'm yeah open to talking about anything really um, but I guess I, in some of my other videos I have I guess alluded to the fact that things have been quite tough um, the, the last three years really obviously it's been tough for everyone um, but particularly the last year I think it's like just uh, probably just like the culmination of the previous two years before that with COVID and everything um, and just last year being pretty tough in my business and I guess just feeling um, just feeling worn down feeling exhausted and to be honest not always knowing what I should be doing next like should I be doing this should I be doing something different like what yeah just feeling I guess a little bit stuck and I don't like to kind of um, Kind of sit and say oh, I'm stuck I'm stuck I'm stuck because the more you say that the more you will be stuck right but um, I was in a little bit of a um, rut I guess like that's not really the right word but yeah in a low point let's say um, but I really do feel even just in the last week that the energy has shifted um, and I know astrology wise there are big shifts happening at the moment I'm not an expert on that but just little bits and pieces that I've read from some people I follow um, yeah so I'm feeling really so much more optimistic and um, hopeful and yeah excited I guess for what this year um, is for what's going to happen this year <laughs> So yeah, that's I guess kind of where I've been at and 
that's not to say that I haven't still loved my job. I love my work so much and it is one of the things in my life that actually just like fuels me. Like I can't not do it, which I think last year is why I was kind of yeah, depressed because I was like just wondering how on earth I was going to keep doing it. But I do feel like this year things are starting to get better, which is wonderful. And I've only had, and it only just happened today, I've only had one cancellation um, due to COVID this year. So that's kind of like a po positive step, a step in the right direction. So I guess as a overview that is what has been happening for me recently and the way I've just kind of got through that I guess is number one just kept going sometimes that is all you can do and that is what I did I just kept going and I just kept trying and yeah as I said I really feel like I have turned a corner in the last week or so and kind of just feeling yeah a lot more positive about things so yeah so and I've just I guess being trying to look after myself as much as I can I just kind of think you know if you're looking after yourself um, like physically emotionally mentally then um, yeah you can just cope with things a lot better and just get a lot more done as well but at the same time allowing yourself to actually feel how you feel and uh, yeah just kind of make decisions from there I hope that all makes sense. I just did want to share that with you and just some of the other things that I'm doing now as well. I'm just trying to make sure I get enough rest. And like, for instance, we were going to go for a hike today, but we both woke up and Andrew and I both woke up and we we're just feeling tired and we just thought, you know what? Today and tomorrow are days off. There's no reason why we can't just move our hike till tomorrow. I actually have an appointment kind of in the middle of the day. So we're going to then go afterwards in the afternoon and yeah so that's what I mean just kind of making decisions that um, are good for you and so yeah that that's just some of the things that I'm doing and trying to just switch off more like just do some more reading and yeah just do things especially of an evening that help me to switch off so yeah I'm kind of trying to implement a really nice nighttime routine which is all about winding down and just being able to go to sleep really easily and get a nice sleep um, yeah so that is I guess that is an overview of where I am at I hope you are doing really well I hope um, yeah that you're coping really well and yeah I'd love to know if there is anything that you do for your health and well-being that really helps you during the tough times let me know in the comments because yeah it, it helps everyone when we share this stuff I think and that is what I really want to do more of so let's talk about the well-being studio because that kind of all leads and intertwines together so um Anybody in Canberra probably knows I'm now open Mondays as well, which is really, I think, a great day to be open because lots of people actually have Mondays off and Mondays are normally long weekends, so that is also great. So yeah, now open those four days. Um, and with autumn um, just arriving, I have a beautiful new autumn signature treatment. So that is up on my website. I will leave a link to my treatment menu down below if you like. So if you're in Canberra, you can go and have a look at that. And the other really exciting thing, which I've touched on in a couple of videos recently, I think, is I have a Facebook group called the Calm Living Membership. And I've had that group for a little while. And this year, I'm going to really be spending more time in there just sharing different tips and tools and um, lots of stuff about aromatherapy just um, to help you to live that calmer, more peaceful life that I am kind of, yeah, striving for for myself and what I love helping um, other people to do as well. And the link to that is always in the um, description below, actually. So come and join us if you would like to. I'm doing um, probably three live video little mini workshops a month. So um, yeah, so at the beginning of the month, I'll probably do an intention setting workshop of some description. We're going to be talking about an essential oil of the month on another 
Sunday evening and then um, at the end of March I'm going to have a little workshop about the meaning of autumn so yeah lots of good little things coming up in there so I'd love you to join me over there if you would like to. So that's me and work and yeah I think that's kind of a really good overview of what's happening. So let's talk about, I thought I'd just talk about like do a little bit of a book section in these videos as well. So I have some books to share with you. So I've got four books for this month. I've got Daisy Darker, which I actually just finished reading last night. It is by Alice Feeney and uh, I've read one other of her books which I really enjoyed it and I thoroughly enjoyed this. The ending was really really good. There, there are a couple of things that I guessed or that I thought I knew but there was a bit of a twist at the end which was really really good. I'll just read the back of these so that you um, so that you can see if they um, sound like something you would like to read. So it says Daisy Darker is arriving at her grandmother's house for her 80th birthday. It's Halloween and Seaglass, the crumbling Cornish house perched upon its own tiny private island, is at one of the granite rock is one is at one of the granite rocks it sits on. The Darker family haven't all been in the same place for over a decade, and when the tide comes in, they'll be cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. When the tide goes back out, nothing will ever be the same again, because one of them is a killer. Do, 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 do. <laughs> um, yeah, really highly recommend it. I'll definitely be reading more of her books because they're just like easy reads too, easy reads. And then I have just started, like I've read the, um, just the little prologue um, for The House Swap. And that is by Rebecca Fleet. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one as well. It says, um, when Carolyn and Francis receive the offer of a house swap, they jump at the chance to have a week away from home. After the difficulties of the, past few, of the past few years, they've worked hard to rebuild their marriage for their son's sake. Now they want to reconnect as a couple. On arrival, they find a house that is stark and sinister in its emptiness. It's hard to imagine what kind of person lives here. Then, gradually, Car Carolyn begins to uncover her... Bleh, let me start again. <laughs> Then, gradually, Caroline begins to uncover some signs of life, signs of her life. The flowers in the bathroom and the music in the CD player might seem innocent to her husband, but to her, they are nothing but. It seems the person they have swapped house with is someone she used to know, someone she's desperate to leave in her past. But that person is now in her home and wants to make sure she'll never forget. It's a kind of thriller that I love reading. I love those sorts of books. <laughs> Um, and then the other two that I have, um, this one is called The Foundling by Stacey Halls. Never read anything by her before. I just, yeah, all, all of these books are from the library, by the way. So, yeah, I just wandered through the library the other day and picked all of these out. I had Daisy Darker on order. I had it reserved. So, but the others I just kind of wandered around and found. So, um this one says, two women bound by a child and a secret that will change everything. London, 1754, six years after leaving her illegitimate daughter Clara at London's Foundling Hospital, Bess Bright returns to reclaim the child she has never known. Dreading the worst that Clara has died in care, she is astonished when she is told she has already claimed her. Her life is turned upside down as she tries to find out who has taken her little girl and why. Sounds interesting and she's um, written at least another book so if I like this one that would be good. Um, it says from the best-selling author of The Familiars comes this captivating story of mothers and daughters, class and power and love against the greatest of odds. I'm actually looking forward to that, something like a little bit different. And then the last one I have is Sally Hepworth, The Soulmate. Um, so this one's been all over the internet so you've probably heard of this one. So it says, Gabe is alone at the cliff's edge. His arms are outstretched, palms facing the empty air. He said she jumped. He wouldn't lie. Before the woman went over the cliff, Pippa and Gabe were happy. They had the kind of marriage that everyone envies, as well as two sweet young daughters, a supportive family, and a picturesque cliffside home, which would have been idyllic had the tall beachside cliffs not become so popular among those wishing to end their lives. Gabe has become somewhat of a local hero since they moved to the cliff house, taking, 
taking talking seven people down from stepping off the edge. But when Gabe fails to save the eighth, a sordid web of secrets begins to unravel, pushing bonds of loyalty and love to the brink. What would you do for your soulmate? <laughs> so yeah, looking forward to all of those. Let me know if you've read any of them without spoilers. And uh, yeah, or any books you can recommend, I would love to know because I don't have any, I don't think I have any on reserve at the moment. Um, but I do have two. That is what the other thing that I wanted to share with you. I have two. Oh, I'm just trying to open my iPad here because I've got all these notes here. I have two on my TBR which are non-fiction. And these are books I probably will buy. I don't really buy fiction books anymore because I don't tend to keep them. And um, yeah, it's just a bit of a money saving um, little thing as well because yeah, books, cost of books adds up, don't they? <laughs> so the library is great um, for that. But yeah, I have two non-fictions that I would love to read. So I'll probably buy these. I probably won't get them until next month now, I don't think. But the first one is called Atlas of the Heart by Brené Brown. And then the second one is Bittersweet by Susan Cain. And um, yeah, they both sound like just really thoroughly... Um, interesting and meaningful books to read so I'll just share what they're about I've just got a couple of paragraphs about what they're, they're about so Atlas of the Heart is by Brené Brown and it says if we want to find the way back to ourselves and each other we need language and the grounded confidence to both tell our stories and to be stewards of the stories that we hear this is the framework for meaningful connection and so what she does is it says journey through 87 of the emotions and experiences that define what it means to be human as she maps the necessary skills and an actionable framework for meaningful connection she gives us the language and tools to access the universe of new new choices and second chances a universe where we can share and steward the stories of our bravest and most heartbreaking moments with one another in a way that builds connection just think that is so beautiful like just to be able to um you know i guess talk about what we're going through what we've been through um you know it, it helps us i think when we talk about it but then it also helps those who are going through similar things you know sometimes we don't talk about stuff until after we've been through it which i think is fine um i'm kind of like that um but yeah if somebody who is going through it at that time I think it just can be really so, so, so helpful because sometimes we think we're the only ones feeling a particular way and that is not true. If you are feeling it, you are not the first to feel it. <laughs> the second book is called Bittersweet by Susan Cain. And I love this. I read years and years and years ago, I read her book called Quiet. And it's a book about the power of being an introvert and like I can't really remember the details because it was such a long time ago but I just remember loving that book so much and yeah this book is called Bittersweet and it says sadness is your superpower in her new masterpiece the author of the best-selling phenomenon Quiet explores the power of the of the bittersweet personality revealing a misunderstood side of mental health and creativity while offering a roadmap to facing grief in order to live life to the fullest bittersweet is a tendency to states of longing poignancy and sorrow an acute awareness of passing time and a curiously piercing joy at the beauty of the world it recognizes that light and dark birth and death bitter and sweet are forever paired if you've ever wondered why you like sad music, if you find comfort or inspiration in a rainy day, if you re react intensely to music, art, nature and beauty, then you probably identify with the bittersweet state of mind. I can just so relate to those things. I don't know if you can or not, but yeah, it just that just like speaks to me. So it says with Quiet, Susan Cain urged our society to cultivate space for the undervalued, indispensable introverts among us, thereby revealing an untapped power hidden in plain sight. Now she employs the same mix of research, storytelling and memoir to explore why we experience sorrow and longing and how embracing the bittersweet at the heart of life is the true path to creativity, connection and transcendence. 
I just that just sounds so intensely beautiful to me and I can't I can't wait to read both of those books so um, when I do I will share them with you definitely I'll share some yeah thoughts on them when I do read them but as I said I probably probably won't get those tool towards the end of the month or next month so but I'm excited to read those and excited to read all of these in the meantime <laughs> Okay, guys, I think that is all I have to share today. I'm kind of up to the 20 minute mark or just past the 20 minute mark. So I think that is probably long enough. But if you have any thoughts you would like to share, any questions, please do so in the comments and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Um, thank you so much for watching, especially if you've gotten right through to this point. And yeah, I guess just remember you are always just one long, deep, beautiful breath away from connecting to that inner calm that is always, always there for you. Thanks for watching and I will see you in another video very soon.